After every draft, all the haters and the losers come out and critique the general manager's selections and moves and trades and, and whatnot. That includes uh, other teams. That includes uh, fans w within the fan base. Uh, but what about the professionals? So every year, ESPN's Jeremy Fowler uh, uh, compiles a, a list of critiques, uh, whether positive, whether good, whether bad, whether whatever, from anonymous uh, anonymous uh, NFL scouts, NFL executives, etc. And here's what they had to say about Vikings new GM Quasi Dofamensis first draft at helm at the helm of the Minnesota Fine Vikings is what they wrote. Uh, a first time general manager eschewing his first draft pick for the right to move back 20 spots might seem like a surprise, but for those who know Quasi Dofamensa, this was a telegraph move. He's trading out, guarantee it. An AFC scout said he's all about value and volume. Now that could be presumptive. Since Quasi, the first time as a general manager, first time at the helm, so I was like, what does this anonymous AFC scout know? But then you think, is this a Brown scout? I don't know, maybe. It's possible, man. Uh, or you know, just looking at uh, the track record of the Browns, looking at the track record of the Niners when he was there, maybe. Maybe. Uh, the Vikings traded the 12th and 46 picks to Detroit. St. Detroit, man, the Super Bowl. For 32, 34, 66. And then they flipped 34 to the Packers for 53 and 59. Only to move up from 53 to 42 to get uh, with Indianapolis to get their corner. Andrew Boo Jr. Is a, it was a dizzying display. Love the alliteration. That included three trades before the middle of the second round and moves with two division rivals. Another scout noted that locating more picks is an analytically sound move, which is a Dofamensa style. So yeah, that scout talked about Kwesi, not from a traditional scouting background. Oh, I'm just going up and get your guys. So especially in this draft when the talent pool was so flat in terms of there's only a handful of blue chip picks and maybe the Vikings didn't see one available at 12. So they moved down to get into the meat into the blubber uh, of this draft uh, especially day two when there was a lot of talent to be had third round linebacker brian asamo was consistently mentioned among scouts as an underrated player in the draft process he should contribute immediately so uh, even though there they are critiques, I mean overall they're they're relatively positive or neutral. Like no one was uh, skewering uh, Quasi for the trade down, like, like Vikings fans were, frankly, trading down with the Lions or trading down with the Packers. Because, I mean, by all, all the modern metrics, uh, unless you go by the Jimmy Johnson trade chart, which from 30 years ago, I mean the Vikings won, you know, quote unquote won in terms of absolute draft value. The Lions trade, they won the the one the Packers trade going away. So I. It's really interesting that the professionals, the absolute pro, uh, absolute pros, pros here, even though they're anonymous off the record or yeah, keeping their name out of it, uh, they could have easily just like completely gone after Quasi's like this trade was dumb, but they didn't. And you would think if they would have said something that Fowler would have certainly included it in the article because that would have generated buzz and clicks and, and uh, interest and whatnot. But overall, I, I'm again, I'm happy with the draft at, at the time, the trade out from 12, in division it was a long drop especially just waiting in the first round seeing what the vikings were going to get giving up 46 kind of sucked but then everything made sense uh, when they flipped 34 to the packers they got two two dose second round picks and then moved up from 53 to go get andrew boo jr and asamoah in the third round is monster value absolutely monster i i think that the vikings we talked about they could have five defensive starters from this draft seen for sure booth yes asamoah yes uh, caleb evans could develop into the uh, opposite uh, outside starting cornerback with andrew boo jr if dancer doesn't step up and otome who could become a uh, starting five tech for the vikings so i think defensively this is a fantastic draft offensively i mean ty chandler is going to come in as a third down back ed ingram could start as a rookie uh vidarian low i mean the value of vidarian low becoming that new swing tackle the new rashad hill i mean that's valuable I, just because like oh the sixth round pick doesn't going to become a starter who cares I mean, if you in the sixth round, if you get a high quality swing backup tackle that you can rely on, that's a win. It's absolute value. J Jalen Naylor, we we've talked about. I think that he has a chance to become something really special, both as a returner as well as a wide receiver, three, four, five, six uh, in the Vikings uh, scheme, if he can stay healthy. And then Nick Muse in the seventh round, I, I think is phenomenal value as a pass catching tight end, where the Vikings tight end depth right now. It ain't great uh, behind Irv Smith Jr. So Muse has a huge opportunity as well. So this draft class, you know, not just you know wearing the purple glasses and drinking the purple Kool Aid. I, I don't know how you can be mad at it. I, I simply do not understand it. And now you could say that Quasi shouldn't have traded in division, but we we sort of changed our minds 
on the fly because, uh, hey, if a team in your division wants to give up excess draft capital, if they want to punt, go ahead. Go ahead and catch their punt because the Lions would have gotten Jameson Williams anyway. Uh, absent the Vikings drafting Jameson at 12, the Lions would have traded up to go get him, with, probably with the Texans at 13. And uh, Absent the Vikings drafting Watson at 34, the Packers would have traded up to 35 or 36 and draft him anyway. So, I mean, if they want to spew off value, we'll take it. Like No one, no one is talking about, hey— uh, the Viking, uh, the Vikings fleece the Packers. The Vikings fleece the Lions, which they should. I mean, they should. The Lions and the Packers gave up too much, according to the modern uh, metrics, modern charts, to go up and get their guy, who who's not a sure-fire uh, thing. But having more uh, uh, tickets in the lotto, I mean, the Vikings could hit pay dirt, especially I uh, love their moves on day two. So yeah, the whole you know Quasi in his first draft. Uh, again, it would have been very easy for these anonymous scouts to just completely throw Kwesi under the bus as a worst draft ever, completely got owned by uh, teams in his division. What was he thinking? But they didn't. They they didn't because they see the value. They, they see the modern analytical value of maneuvering for more picks, especially in day two, which is the fat part of this draft. And Kwesi got it done. And this class, uh, I think, is going to be just a, a game changer. It will be. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Anonymous NFL scouts critique Kwesi Adolfo first draft. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most support the work. Put a little something in the Vedma. But until next time, Skull Production Value.